This is a redox titration. Uh, in this case, we are going to calculate the concentration of the copper sulfate solution here using uh, sodium thiosulfate to um, perform the titration and potassium iodide, which is going to react with the copper sulfate to produce the iodine in solution. The starch to show the presence of iodine is going to act like an indicator, that is 1%. Uh, we also need, as Matthias, the uh, burette, which will put the sodium thiosulfate here. Uh, the burette clamp, the white tile, the um, pipette, the volumetric pipette, and the pipette filler. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is to uh, take the 25 centimeters cube of the so, uh, copper sulfate solution, and we are going to use uh, this volumetric pipette to fill it up to the limit here, okay? This is the accurate volume that shows that is 25, and um, we are going to rinse that first. We're going to be sure that we have only the copper sulfate solution there, so I'm going to use a little bit to rinse the pipette. So we are going to use the piper filler for that. Okay, so we are going to release the liquid. we can refill it with a clean one. I'm going to get to the volume that is marked there and then holding the wheel I'm going to transfer that Now, the liquid that stays here is supposed to stay there. That's why it's called a volumetric pipette. So, now we are ready to go. We have already, already filled the burette with the thiosulfate. And the thiosulfate is... Um, the concentration is 0.1 molar, so we record before beginning um, the amount that we have. So I'm going to release a little bit of thiosulfate so it overpasses the zero. And we record the first measurement. For your titrations, you need to fill out a table like this. The first one is going to be the rough titration. It's going to be an approximate number of the volume that is used. And the rest are going to be different titrations that you're going to continue until you get a difference of 0 0.1 decimeter, 0 0.1 centimeter cube in difference. In this case, the original or the initial volume is going to be 0 0.75 decimeters cubed because it's passing the 70 and not getting into the 80.
Remember that all measurements in the BRED must be with two decimals. If you are in the Cambridge program, the last decimal is going to be zero if the volume falls just on a line, and if it is in between two consecutive lines, it's going to be five. They do not accept any other values. After we measure the initial volume, we will place the um, copper sulfate solution, and we are going to add 10 milliliters of the potassium iodide, one molar in this case. It has to be in excess. And you're going to see that the color is getting brown. Okay, so we are going to begin the titration with the thiosulfate until this one gets in a lighter color, yellow-brown. Remember that air all the time, you need to swirl so the We measure the volume again and we see that for the rough titration we obtain 25.90, it's a little bit overpassing, 25.90 is okay. After recording the volumes for the rough titration we perform three more titrations four more titrations, uh, which we have the values on the screen. And um, we are going to disregard the titration number two because it's of the values that we obtained in one, three, and four. That's why when we calculated the average values, um, the average value for the actual titration, we are going to use only 24.75, 24.85, and 24.75 again, which are the values for 
the number one, number three, and number four. And that gives us a volume of 24.78 centimeters cube. The rest are calculations that are going to be in the next video. In this titration, we use the uh, sodium sulfate to calculate the concentration of the copper sulfate solution. So in this case, we know the concentration of the sodium sulfate, which is 0.1 molar, and we need to calculate the concentration of the solution. We can calculate the number of moles of the thiosulfate by using the volume that we use in the titration and the concentration that we have here. And that is the first step that we are going to do. So the first step that we are going to do is calculate the number of moles of sodium sulfate, thiosulfate, in the volume used. Knowing that the concentration is 0 0.100 molar. So the number of moles is equal to the volume in decimeters cube times the concentration. We have the volume of that we use in 24.78 centimeters cube. So this one is going to be is equals to 0 0.02478 decimeters cube times 0 0.100 moles over decimeter cube. So decimeter cube goes with this one, and the number of moles is equals to 0 0.002478. Moles with three significant digits is going to be the 0 0.00248 moles. Of thiosulfate. The next step will be calculating how much copper was in the 25 milliliters. And we know that the thiosulfate reacted with the iodine, and the iodine was first produced by the copper. Now, in the copper, the next step is going to be calculating the number of moles of copper that reacted with iodine, which reacted at at the same time with the thiosulfate. So we have the moles of thiosulfate that is 0 0.00248. And for each two of these, we have one of these. So we can calculate the amount of moles of iodine. And you're going to see that actually this is going to be the same number of moles here because those two reacted with one and then one gives us two. So um, it's going to be the same thing. But anyways, if you don't see it directly or maybe the reaction is different, we can work it out. We know that two moles of thiosulfate are going to react with one mole of iodide, uh, iodine. Uh, so 0 0.00248 moles of thiosulfate are going to react with X. And uh, X, which is the moles of iodide, the iodine that uh, was reacting with the thiosulfate is going to be 0 0.00124 moles of iodine. So this is the amount of iodine that was produced by the copper in the first reaction, okay? So now, this is the same as produced by 
the copper ions, okay? Now, because of the mole ratio, we know that two moles of copper to plus produce one mole of iodine to produce 0 0.012, 0 0.00, one to four moles of iodine are gonna be produced by X, where X is the amount of copper that was present in the 25 milliliters. So X is gonna be 0 0.00248 moles of copper two plus. Now this is the copper two plus present in the 25 centimeters cube of the solution that we put in the flask at the very beginning. So if to, uh, 0 0.00248 moles of copper were present in the 25 centimeters cube in 1,000 milliliters, or 1,000 centimeters cubed is going to be X. That is going to be the molarity. We know that this amount of moles are present in 25 centimeters cube of the solution. That is 0 0.025 decimeters cube, which is the same thing. Okay, so we can calculate the molarity of the solution of copper sulfate as the number of moles divided by the volume in decimeters cube. This one is going to be 0 0.00248 divided by 0 0.025. That gives us around 0 0.1 molar of copper sulfate solution. Now, if you don't see it like this, you can do it with a proportion. In 25 centimeters cube, you have 0 0.00248 moles of copper 2 plus in 1,000 centimeters cube. You're going to have X. And again, X is around 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. So we put a solution in the burette that was 0 0.1 molar of the thiosulfate. And we used 25, around 25 centimeters cube. And we have in the flask, or in the, you can use a beaker too, 25 centimeters cube of a solution of copper sulfate. And the ratio between these is 1, 1, because when we see the reaction, two of thiosulfate react with one of iodine, but this one of iodine is produced by two copper. So basically the ratio here is 1, 1. So since the ratio is 1, 1, we can say that the volumes are the same. The concentration in this one has to be 0 0.1 molar.